Welcome to the Rethink Sales Show. My name is Derek Kelly. I am joined by Jim Shorkey. And Jim, off camera, we were just talking about the importance of setting healthy habits and healthy routines. I've heard this quote, and I just want your thoughts on it. Somebody recently said to me, motivation is overrated. It's all about your environment. So I want to talk through that. So I thought about this, and they were saying, think about it. If there's a cookie jar in the middle of the room, you're more tempted, if you're near that part, I'm to, not. to eat all the cookies in the jar. <laughs> I, I know, I'm not either. But I did think about this. I realized recently I've been reading more, and I, I've told myself that I have a cue that when I sit down in this chair, so I make my smoothie in the morning, really healthy smoothie. When I sit down in this chair in the morning, I'm going to start reading or listening to an audiobook, whatever fits. If I have my 18-month-old with me, it's a little less hard to read. But I'm committed to do this thing every morning, and it happens without flaw because I've given myself that cue of the environment. So what's your thoughts? How much does the environment play into motivation, and how much is it both in because those cues help me. You and I have talked a lot about just having those things that kind of putting your running shoes by the door yeah. so you see them and go outside. Having that chair that I'm sitting in to make sure I'm reading, right? The fact that I sit down in that chair, it reminds me of, oh, I said I'm committed to this. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. So where does environment play? Is it all motivation? Is it all just we got to have self-control and make that choice? Or is, is the environment a piece of it? The envi environment is, is crucial. Mm -hmm. The environment, just think about the environment. Mm -hmm. from the perspective of my body, right? Mm -hmm. So I look at what am I putting on my body? Mm -hmm. So I'm very careful about the lotions that I use. I use a shea butter. Mm -hmm. I do not use these massively chemicalized yes. things. Yeah. So that's I'm putting that on my body, mm -hmm. okay? So what am I putting on my body? Mm -hmm. I, I, I uh, use a sp specific healthier deodorant. Mm -hmm. So what am I putting in my body? Very careful about my diet. Very mm -hmm. careful about the foods that I choose. Mm -hmm. uh, organic and grass-fed, right. grass-finished, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And uh, for example, right now, I'm drinking the uh, matcha green tea. I'm also a, a intermittent faster. So far today, I put no food in my body. Mm -hmm. So that would be, what am I putting in my body today? So far, it's matcha green tea. And I know that I've got to make my tea. It's, I don't know that it's so much of a cue, but it's just a mental awareness. Mm -hmm. And it could be a cue. If I was yeah. getting it, starting a new habit like this, yeah. I would take my teacup and put it in a place where I got to fall over it. Oh, yeah, tea, yeah. And then I go <laughs> make my tea. Yeah, that's usually me for new habits. Yeah. It's for, for habits I have ingrained, it's not as hard. Exactly, to... yeah. But when you, again, back to the environment. So for the body, it's what am I putting in mm -hmm. my body? What am I putting on my body? What am I doing with my body? Mm -hmm. So I knew that you were coming today. Mm-hmm. At nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's an environmental cue. Yeah. Okay. So I knew that I had to get up at eight o'clock in the morning. Right. So I set my environment. I set my alarm for eight o'clock in the morning because mm -hmm. I wanted to exercise. It turns yeah. out that exercise is really important for my brain. Yes. I am a stroke recovery guy. I'm trying mm -hmm. to recover from stroke. Mm -hmm. So I got to work on my brain. So exercise is a very important component. So I knew that I wanted to do that before this, okay? So I uh, set my alarm for 8 o'clock. I guess it's not rocket science here, but that's yeah. what I did. So right. I had an, an intention mm -hmm. of exercising in the morning. Yeah. And then I called you and said, what time do you think we're going to start? And you said around yeah. 1030. I said, okay, I got time now. So I went outside with the intention of walking I did th over 30 hills. I stressed my body up, out. I kept working at it. And I knew after that that I was going to do the cold plunge. And I'm watching my watch the whole time. That's an environmental cue as well. The watch is a great one. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at my watch like, okay, I know how long it's going to take me to cold plunge. I'm cold plunging yeah. at 41 degrees. I was in there for seven minutes. This is not medical advice, gang. Don't do what I do. And uh, then I had to reserve time to take a shower. And if you notice, I, I checked in with you, right? Mm -hmm. I said, Derek, we still 1030? Yep, yep, things are good. And I was thinking you might even say, well, you know what? We're running behind a little bit, maybe quarter of, and I would have maybe done a little more of A, yeah, B, or C. Yeah. So uh, the environment is everything. And we have the ability as human beings to control our environment if we decide to do that. Hmm. But at the same time, sometimes we can't. Like, right. for example, today, the environment right. that I found myself in was, it was incredibly windy and incredibly rainy. Yeah, so you're so, wet and cold. Wet and cold. And so the brain, when I'm confronted with that, says, come on, Jim, 
Why don't we just wait take, today let's look, off? Let's look at the weather thing. Yeah, yeah. That's going to get nicer later today. Why don't we wait? No. You said you're going to walk. You've been wet before. You've been cold before. Put your crap on. Tie your shoes. Get out there. And I did. I, I went out and did it. And I had it all planned out. Yeah. So I, I run my environment. I can't change the rain mm-hmm. and change the temperature. But what I can do is I can embrace the rain. Mm-hmm. I can embrace the cold. You saw me out there. I had a... Long sleeve shirt on, no hat, no gloves. I was cold. Yeah. But that's me challenging myself. Yeah. So did I answer your question? Yeah. I just realized I think there's a motivation piece, but I think there's a way to set your environment well. What you're saying is basically set it up well so you can achieve what you want. Because you could have just said, oh, I don't care about the alarm. I'm just going to get up when my body wakes me up. Let's go back a month, okay? uh And let's understand that one of the most important parts of Rethink You 2.0 mm-hmm. is what do you want? What is your goal? What is my goal? My immediate goal right now is 100% stroke recovery. So I've got that very clearly in my mind. I've got it written down. I write it often. 100% stroke recovery. And that's the goal. The next question is, do my reasons why make me cry? You betcha. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've got a lovely wife. I've got four children and significant others. I've got my two dogs. I've got my grandchildren. I've got different trips I want to go on. There's so many things that I want to do that upon my death, I don't get to do them anymore. So my reasons why definitely make me emotional. And this is a very important thing to understand. It's crucial. I want to have a very clear goal and I want to have very clear reasons why. Now, the next step is to seek expert counsel to figure out what are the things that I need to do yep. to, to, to beat this thing. Because one of, the, one of the big downsides to a stroke is the potential for dementia, uh, mm-hmm. Alzheimer's disease, uh, additional strokes, other yep. problems. I had a stroke. This is not a good thing. And so I am very insistent and very intentional in terms of working on my brain. And seek expert counsel. I've got this book on maximizing brain power. I look at the title and it's like, I want that. And why I want that makes me very emotional. So in reading the book, this fellow that wrote the book, who is a PhD, he has this program called Cognifit. And it is a, you, I had to buy it. And I did. And I've already started in on it. And I'm not real good at it. And you know what? I don't like it. I was thinking about it last night. I got to do those brain exercises tomorrow. Uh, I don't like that because I'm not good at it. And I don't like not being good at things. Yes. But the problem is being good at things can work to our disadvantage because Mm. it's easy for us because we're good at it. And so when you're talking about improving your brain, yes, there is some sense of routine. But if we overdo the routines and get overly good at stuff, then we're going to have potential deterioration in our brains. And and, and again, this is not medical advice. You're talking to Jim Shorkey, who had a stroke a year ago. And so I'm in a different world than you are. And I have a different set of circumstances than you do. Yes. But I have to be motivated. That, the environment is not going to motivate me. I have to motivate me. And one of the things I learned in the book, by the way, is to get outside more often. We don't get outside enough. So I've really been working at that one. Another downside to our life today is it's too easy. Mm-hmm. It's just too easy. Yeah. And, and so you'll hear this, and you hear it, it sounds trite, but when you go to the grocery store, they tell you to park as far away as you can from the grocery store. And that does count. It's more difficult to walk far away from the grocery store than it is to park close and then walk in. And then when you get your groceries, you got to take them back out to the car. So you're pushing, lifting, take the car where it's supposed to go. Hopefully you're doing that. It's supposed to go in the little thing. I do that, but I'm getting a lot of uh, what is called functional movement Mm -hmm. when I do that. Mm -hmm. They also tell you to take the stairs, not the elevator. Right. Take the stairs, not the escalator. Don't stand on the people mover. We've made life too easy. Does that make sense? Yeah. We now all drive automatic transmissions. Mm-hmm. There was no such thing a couple hundred years ago. Yeah. 
and I'm probably exaggerating numbers, whatever it was, 150, whatever. Everything was a standard transmission. You had to clutch, you had to brake, you had to shift. You had to use more brain and more physicality. Now everything's automatic. Mm-hmm. We would drive cars without air conditioning, so we get hot with sweat, with the windows down. Now we just turn the temperature down and we get cool. Everything is easier. And unfortunately, the easiness is making our bodies less vibrant, our brains less yes. vibrant. Yes. And it's just too easy. That's what evolutionary mismatch is all about. We are not, yeah. we grew up evolutionarily speaking in a very difficult environment. We had right. to go out and find our own food. Right. We were hunters and gatherers. In the truest sense, when's the last time you went out and hunted and gathered? It's probably not happening for the vast majority of the listeners. And I'm not recommending that you go out and hunt and gather. I'm not. But what I am recommending you do is go for a walk in the woods. Mm -hmm. That would be a, it's obviously a very similar thing. And then try to pay attention. I was, I did a hike the other day. I was very pleased that I was able to do that. I intentionally did a hike and I actually stopped at this tree. It was a big tree. And I was actually talking to the tree. I had both hands on the tree. And I said, man, dude, how old are you? You got to be a hundred years old or whatever. I don't know. I'm not that much of an expert on that, but it was like, I'm talking to this tree I'm listening to the birds. I'm thanking the birds, actually. I'm out in the woods, and I'm thanking the birds. Thank you, guys. Oh, you're so beautiful. Thank you. How's my boys doing? And I see a squirrel. Hey, buddy, how you doing, man? What's going on down there? And I just was talking to the tree. And uh, it's a very powerful modality. Yeah. Very powerful. And you reminding me of the importance of challenges in my story, right? I was told as a premature baby that my brain wasn't supposed to develop. I don't know what age. I yeah. remember somebody telling me 13, but I was too young and didn't remember exactly when, but my yeah. brain wasn't supposed to develop as much as it did now. And I remember challenging myself in school to like, I can take that more difficult class. I can do this subject. I can be in the gifted program. To me, it was, I got to stretch my brain. I got to do the harder things. And I remember being in high school right at the end and they had this advanced college literature class. It was what you often did in high school to prepare for college. And I asked my English teacher, I said, do you think I could do this? I was getting B's in her class. And this other guy, his name was Phil. He was getting A's. And she said, I think you could do it. I said, good for you. What what do you mean? Me? Like this guy's getting A's. And she said, he doesn't cross his T's and dot his I's but I know you can do this. And I'm thinking, why does this woman believe in me? You know what I mean? That's great. And so that's a mentor. I start taking that class and this is back when Facebook was new and they made this group and they said, Derek Kelly's not smart enough to do AP literature. I'm I'm like you, Russ, said, let me show you how this works. Watch me. And we had to read all the Shakespearean plays and these kids were valedictorians and things like that. And so they would read it once and I had to read it two or three times over the summer. But it's not just, it's tough reading. And Mm -hmm. that's the point. You're challenging your brain. Mm Mm-hmm. You're doing something different. It's novelty. So keep your routines, assuming yep. they're producing. Remember, we all, re, well, let me back up. Mm-hmm. I don't, I want to be clear on this. Results are the name of the game. Write that down. Keep that in front of you. Results yeah. are the name of the game. And results are simply information. Mm-hmm. Good results, most likely you have a good system. Right. Bad results, most likely you have a bad system. And, but a little deeper than that, Good results, most likely you're executing that good system. And bad results could mean that you're not executing that good system. So you really got to get into this deep. Look at the system. Is it a good system? It's working for Joey over here. Maybe I'm not doing it the right way. That would be the contemplated part of it. But results are the name of the game. And so if we don't like our results, we've got to execute what is called a pivot, Mm P-I-V-O-T. And pivot would mean... To me, at least, going to expert counsel, talking to expert counsel about the system, and and they would figure out very quickly, Jim, you're not doing the system. That's why your results aren't what you want them to be. We got to dot the I's and cross the T's to use your just to your language. Yeah, that story is interesting because how it finished. So obviously they said I think they separated into nine week periods. So the first nine weeks, I'm getting a C in the College literature class. I'm thinking, this is tough. Still passing grade. Then then next nine weeks, I'm getting an A. Oh, good for you. Then the next nine weeks, I got still an A. But then by the end, I was either A minus or A plus. Because of the C, yeah. And then they threw a party at the end, and we have a team volleyball, and it was Team Derek Kelly. 
And suddenly that group of people came around me that's a, and we were that's a part beautiful. of a team. That's beautiful. And it wasn't like Derek can't do this so because it was, I challenged myself. I wasn't these people. We had so many philosophical, deep conversations and I wasn't able to have those conversations, but it challenged me to, huh, I don't know how to respond to that, but let me think about it. Yeah. And so I spent more time stretching myself then, which I think made me a part of the person I am today. Like, but, to, but to that point, look at how you're communicating right now. Look at your body language, look at your hand movement, look at your facial expressions, and look at how you're communicating. Yeah. And here's a guy that was never going to be able to do this. Yeah. You were not going to be able to do this. Yeah. And you're on a, you're in front of a camera. You're right. Yeah. I never imagine that. Imagine back yeah. in those days. Was yeah. Like, I want to do this someday. Yeah. Oh, I was on, nervous Derek. and shy. Yeah. Oh, I don't know you, how to talking to this guy who's valedictorian of a yeah, 500 person exactly. class. Yeah. I'm thinking he's way smarter than me. He knows all these facts yeah. that I don't, but I just learned. Are you talking to a guy right now who is a valedictorian of the car business? Yes. Are you? Absolutely. Yeah. You just got to Google Jim Shorkey and it's, something happened here. Yeah. So you're talking to a, a val valedictorian of yeah. sorts, different kind. Right. But, uh, and are you intimidated? Some moments for sure. But well, you, overall, but no. But you're doing great. Yeah. This guy. Some that, moments, oh my God, Jim's, Jim's going to tell me why I'm completely wrong here. That happens sometimes. Yeah. This guy who but, can't, is it, but you were told you would not ever be able to do something like this yeah talk to this kind of yeah. a guy you're just not going to be able to do it you right. don't have the, the mental the bandwidth yeah. to do it i guess they were wrong wow yeah that's okay yeah and guys think about this we're talking about environment and i think sometimes what jim is saying is sometimes people let the environment control so much of their lives that i could have just said i guess these are my circumstances i guess this is my environment i'm just going to do my best and get by and i'll be okay but instead i'm like you and i said how do I challenge myself? How do I take the next step? But let's be careful here. If there is a tornado coming, yes. you need to move to the basement. Yes. And all the positive affirmations are not going to change the fact that tornado is about to take you out. If there is a lion out in the yard, mm -hmm. you need to alter your walk today. Don't walk up to the lion and say, hi, kitty cat. No, don't do that. <laughs> Stay away. Right. So that would be an example. I'm motivated to go outside. I love being outside. I have reasons why they made me cry, but there's a lion out there. Yeah. I need to alter my plan. I need to pivot. Yeah. So the environment is a very real thing and it can derail us. And we try everything we possibly can to have it. No like my stroke. Mm -hmm. That's an environment, an in internal yeah. environment, but I didn't plan on that. I didn't expect that. Right. But guess what, Derek? It just gives me one more challenge in life to say, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to beat this sucker. Yeah. And then what am I going to do with that? I'm going to say, listen, let's have a conversation because if I could beat my stroke, you can beat yours too, or whatever the case may be, yeah. whatever the disability may be. Yeah. I have a disability. When I first started walking back in the hospital, I was walking with a walker. I walked to the end of the hallway and back. It wasn't even a hundred yards. I don't, I, I couldn't tell. I didn't measure yeah. it, but it wasn't even a hundred yards. And I had to lay down and take a nap. Yeah. And they would time me like they would have me in the physical therapy. They, they would have me stand up and they would say, okay, you're at three minutes. You know, it's about ready to be done. And I'd be hurt and bad. And I had to keep going. Now I could, I, I did a speech, mm -hmm. the chamber of commerce in yeah. Murraysville. I did a speech that lasted one hour and I'm on my feet the whole time. And then I hung out afterwards with right. a couple of select people just having doing one-on-one -on -one type interviews. Mm -hmm. And I just kept going. And then from there, I did something else, whether I went and did a walk or whatever I did, I've made such progress Wow! because I'm following right. a system yeah. called Rethink You 2.0. Yeah. Wow. I'm doing exactly what I did for my part in building the Jim Shorkey Family Auto Group. And if you want to, to see what happened, just Google it, look at it, and you'll see it. And exactly what I did for my part in building the Jim Shorkey Family Auto Group is what I'm doing for the stroke recovery. But I want to be clear, and Derek, watch his face when I tell him what I'm going to tell him next. The Rethink You 2.0 program is a documentation of exactly what I did to build the Jim Shorkey Family Auto mm. Group. I can't make this stuff up. Chuck Bolina and myself, yeah. through a process of interviews, Yeah. Developed this program, and at that time it was called yeah, the success Journey blueprint. to Success. Yep. Yep. And a success blueprint. We called it jour the, My Journey to Success, and then a success blueprint as well. And this kept morphing. And then we decided we wanted to go big, mm -hmm. and that's when we brought in Derek Kelly 
and his people. I'm trying to think. It was was it here? Yeah. Or was it at the other house? Ah, uh, trying to think about that. You were like just moving into this house. Okay. Anyways, so Derek and his right. people yeah. came here and they listened to what we said, and then they had their input and they had their ideas and, and where do we want to go with this thing? And so it's all been a morphing process yeah. of here's how I did what I did. Similar yeah. to, to Napoleon Hill. Napoleon mm-hmm. Hill wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich, by a process of interviewing 500 of the wealthiest people in America at that time. And basically it was, what did you do? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? And through that process, he found out that there was some com- commonality of what these different people did. Yeah. And hence... The book, Think and Grow Rich, was, which was written in 1937, and uh, it's 13 principles, and it's 373 pages long, and I'm in the hospital, and I had a stroke, and I'm laying flat on my back, and I decided that I was going to use Think and Grow Rich as part of my stroke recovery program, and I actually bought a brand new book, wow. and I can prove it, yeah. and I wrote it in the front of that book. Reading number 162, 100% stroke recovery. Yeah. I can't BS my way through this conversation. Yeah. This is what I'm doing. And you witnessed it this morning. Yeah. You witnessed it. Right. Who's this guy? Well, that's Jim. Right. What's he doing? He's doing the process. Wow. Thanks for sharing. And guys, thanks for tuning in to such a great episode about just how motivation plays together with your environment, how to stay focused, how to stay challenged. And ultimately, how to stay committed. Do my reasons why make me cry? Look at my eyes. They do. It's very emotional. Yeah. Look at my eyes. Look at my facial expression. I'm not acting. I'm not an actor. I'm a car salesman. I'm a worn out old car salesman. But I'm not an actor. I can't act. This is what I'm doing. Okay? Yeah. So check out Rethink You at the link below, guys. And we'll see you inside.